Cool. So Evan, thanks for coming. Um, we have slightly smaller audience than usual today, but we may hear some dings as people uh, uh, show up later and they will suffer the dire consequences of not having heard the beginning of the super cool talk that you have. Uh, regardless, uh, we're super uh, happy to have you, especially now that we've learned that you're not a PhD student, but in fact, a high school student, which makes this all the more fun. So thanks for joining us. And I'm, I'm just going to let you uh, take the stage. Yeah, so um, thank you for having me. Uh, so this is a presentation um, mostly about uh, accidents or um, a series of unfortunate effects, uh, events. Uh, I've been doing a lot of React lately. Um, a series of unfortunate events that kind of led to, um, uh, you know, us being in the press and, uh, you know, just like, it's, it's, you know, so many new experiences for me. Um, but, you know, we kind of, it kind of all started from kind of uh, curiosity, um, which was, you know, we were looking at, you know, NPM and we were thinking there are so many packages on here. There's so many, you know, like ridiculous things on here. And, you know, the, an interesting property of these packages is that they can run arbitrary code when they're installed on your computer. Um, so that was, that was kind of, you know, our, our art project. We were like, what if we installed every single package, you know, onto um, the computer? Um, so uh, the, the I am Evan. Uh, that's my website and my Mastodon account. I don't know if you guys use Mastodon uh, and my GitHub. Um, and I was going to have my friend join me. Unfortunately, the timing uh, ended up not working from last minute, but um, uh, he kind of initiated it. And, you know, I think uh, he would have been a valuable addition to this presentation. So, you know, I wish he was here, but uh, uh, yeah, so um, uh, this is the, you know, we're a high schooler uh, slide. Um, you know, just to kind of provide context for what's about to happen. Uh, we're students. Um, this happened over our winter break. Um, and, you know, as teenagers, um, we, uh, you know, like to, you know, mess around. We're kind of a little bit creative. Uh, and, you know, you can see, uh, you know, from these code samples that we are very, very good at what we do. Um, it, yeah, this one is horrific on the top right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's running uh, live on my web. Uh, yeah, that's running live on my website right now. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. Oh, no, that, that, no, 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 I take it back. That is Minesweeper. That's a, that's the implementation of Minesweeper in JavaScript. Oh, hilarious. Yeah, that's the entire thing. Um, yeah, that's an uh, experience. Um, so, you know, kind of, kind of, uh, even before that, really, the kind of initial um, motivation for this is my friend, you know, on Center stumbled upon uh, you know, this repository. And, you know, you'll note that this was 10 years ago. And at this time, it was, you know, NPM was much, much, much smaller. And it was reasonable to put, you know, a ridiculously large amount of packages, you know, inside a, um, inside a package.json, you know, manifest. Uh, you know, that was just, you know, something you could do at the time. Um, and, you know, he was like trying to modernize it. Uh, and he was like, you know, what if we did this in 2023? Um, and unfortunately, um, there was no, there was like, you know, a hard limit. I think, I believe that the limit was, uh, well, I guess 10 megabytes uh, would not process, uh, process you know, JSON sizes uh, larger than 10 megabytes. Uh, and kind of another problem that we encountered was that, um, and this might come up later, but that you can't publish packages that have more than 800 dependencies. But if you've used JavaScript before, you'll know that, um, people create ridiculous, you know, there's like ridiculous dependency trees. So kind of what we're thinking is, okay, we can split up this package, you know, into more manageable bytes to be installed um, kind of in a um, recursive, you know, manner. Uh, so, you know, this is kind of our plan. You know, we have, uh, you know, the organization A and the organization B and the organization C. And, you know, those all, you know, like sub-dependencies of, you know, the everything, uh, the everything package. Uh, can I? Yeah, turn on the pen. Yeah, the everything package. Um, and we actually encountered, you know, because there's 2 million packages, you know, ridiculous amount, uh, you can't even, you know, fit all that into the 800. So you have to like even do sub sub dependencies, you know, uh, so, you know, we developed a script, uh, to, you know, install all this, uh, and, you know, basically we were like, it would be so funny if, you know, we could just tell people, oh yeah, you know, just run NPM install everything. And that's how, you know, you never need to install anything ever again, you know, it'll just all be there for you. Um, and, you know, we were having a really good time. Uh, so this is a live stream uh, that another one of my friends was doing, um, you know, install everything and chill was captioned. And we basically rented out a virtual machine. And, you know, you can see 
uh, we're uh, monitoring the RAM usage of Yarn as it, um, you know, installs, like, I guess it's installing, it looks like it's some Azure um, package right there. Um, Wait, Evan, you forgot an important piece of information. How many of these freaking packages are there? Uh, Two million. About. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. And, you know, with with the fact that package, you know, NPM packages can run post-install scripts, uh, we are like, the virtual machine is probably not going to survive this. Um, unfortunately, yeah, totally. unfortunately, we never even got to figure that out because, believe it or not, package managers were not designed to um, install uh, 2 million packages kind of in one go. Um, so we were, we tried NPM and we tried Yarn and we tried uh, PNPM, you know, like a bunch of kind of alternative package managers and just none of them like knew how to handle it. Um, but, you know, we were kind of having good fun and we were thinking, you know, okay, maybe, maybe we've got our own package manager that could handle this more responsibly. But um, yeah. And then another thing that we were kind of doing at the same time is we were making kind of a little website, website for a project, um, you know, and at the bottom it said run at your own peril. Um, you know, uh, just good fun. Uh, and, uh, you know, kind of our first issues were, um, were really fun, you know, we, again, <laughs> we're just having a great time, you know, uh, uh, you know, oh no, you know, you've done all of NPM, but you know, we need to, you know, infest rust and whatever. Um, and then kind of things went, uh, things went a little bit south. Um, so kind of the repository from, uh, from you know, how it was nine years ago, there wasn't any, um, any issues, uh, enabled. Um, so we got a pull request, um, and the pull request said that, um, this pull request is not meant to be merged, but I am unable to package, uh, unpublish my package. Um, and they link us to their package and they say, you know, they're not going to need it. Um, it doesn't have any downloads in the last week. I'm the only maintainer. And it's depended on by everything subchunk two four four eight, uh, and they basically say, you know, can you exclude this package from your package, and uh, you know, kind of for what happens next, you need to know like a little bit of JavaScript history, which is this is a screenshot of the package called LeftPad, and the package called LeftPad of twenty sixteen, I want to say it was um. The maintainer, I believe the maintainer was developing a package called Kick, uh, K-I-K. And if you know Kick, you also know that that's a social media company. And the social media company wanted the Kick name for their, you know, API. Um, and the developer, you know, had he had so many packages, including this package left pad. Um, and you know you can see that the left pack package it's a grand total of eleven lines of code I believe, um and you know kind of through you know this huge dependency train it you know was included in so many different places like you know production at Amazon and Google you know and all these companies and basically he you know when Kick came and was like talking to NPM and trying to get him to take it down and he's like no you know it's unrelated to the Kick company this isn't trademark infringement this is like I'm like a respected member of the community you know like this just isn't fair uh NPM sided with Kick and he felt violated and he's like I'm gonna take this off um so he unpublished it uh and you know there's chaos um and we were not really aware of that um so there was a change in NPM policy which is that if any other packages in the public registry depend on it, you cannot unpublish your package. Now, you know, it's, argu it's arguable, you know, if even allowing, you know, package unpublishing is a good policy, you know, in something like a library, you know, uh, or a package re repository, you know, the way that most other uh, packages, you know, circumvent this is, or most other package managers circumvent this is, you know, they have, deprecation and they have uh you know i think rust method is particularly smart which is that you can't add it to new kind of code pieces like the cli recognizes you're trying to add this new package this package has been unpublished or whatever so you can't install it but you know code using it continues to work um but regardless this is the uh policy that npm arrived at uh and the policy that they had in place um so, you know, we were like, okay, crap, like, no, you know, we've kind of uh, messed things up here, uh, messed things up a little bit. Um, so 
he's trying to, you know, unpublish um this package, you know, 2448. Uh, and he's like, okay, uh, you know, to unpublish this, it's it's dependent on, you know, this other package, which is chunk number three. Um, so we also need to unpublish that. And then, you know, to unpublish that, we also have to unpublish everything. Except there was some other random package called everything else that depended on us. And, you know, we didn't we didn't have any control over that. And one of our own chunks depended on ourselves. So we there was like a circular dependency issue where one of our chunks was depending on our main package. And because of that, like we just couldn't do anything. Like none of none of it could be unpublished and nobody else's things could be unpublished and we couldn't help them. Um, so you know, immediately, you know, as he says, uh, we goofed. Um, and we were like, well, you know, we gotta go to NPM support here. And so we did, you know, we were trying to reach out to them. Um and, you know, also another kind of ridiculous component here is that um, we didn't depend on specific versions. We depended on the star version. Um, and you would think that that would mean any version. And again, you know, that's kind of a little bit of questionable design, you would think, because, you know, packages change over time and it doesn't really make sense to just be pulling in any version of a package, right? Because, uh, but that's not even the case. What the star really means, we depend on all versions of the package. So, um, you know, nobody could, again, nobody could, like, if you're depending on every version, then it just doesn't mean it's, like, old versions should be able to unpublish, right? But nobody could unpublish any version. And, you know, just the whole thing, complete and utter mess. Um, and, you know, while we were reaching out, you know, trying to uh, get in contact with, you know, anybody at NPM, you know, we were contacting NPM support and GitHub support. And this guy, uh, Patrick, uh, you know, actually uh, has, you know, connections at GitHub and he was like reaching out to them. Um, and all the while, you know, we were getting like a lot of, you know, a lot of, um, I, hesitate to say, I hesitate to say hate, but, you know, hate, you know, there's this guy, uh, uh, you know, with this really, really, really uh, um, strong feelings, <laughs> strong feelings about, uh, you know, what we did. Uh, and, you know, um, basically, you know, what we were saying is like, um, you know, we're, uh, you know, we were just kind of doing this for fun. This was kind of like a little bit of art, you know, um, and, you know, we had no idea that this was going to happen. Uh, and, you know, it, we, we, we thought that, you know, we're going about it in a responsible way because, you know, if you, if you go back, you know, we were scoping these packages, you know, to the, um, organization. So it wouldn't, you know, pollute the, you know, main space and, you know, there's 2 million packages, right? So our like 3,000 chunks or whatever, not going to really do very much, right? Um, And, you know, in total, I think the storage consequence for like all the manifest was like 80 megabytes. So we were like, you know, this is just, you know, something funny, you know, it's going to exist now, right? Like we didn't know that, you know, it would cause all this. And we were trying to explain all that, but, you know, people were saying, uh, you know, people were obviously frustrated that um this was happening. Uh, and, you know, fair enough. And we were trying to communicate with NPM. We were trying to communicate with them. Um, and, you know, this is kind of, uh, you know, what we're trying to say, right? Like, there's, you know, we're, like, on one hand, like, yes, you know, this was, like, maybe we shouldn't have, you know, pulled up the strings here. But, you know, you know, we think that, you know, us being, you know, students and, you know, that sort of stuff, like, we think that probably the building could have been constructed a little bit better. Like, you know, if the building is the registry, right. And the fact that like us, you know, kind of just doing these funny little things can like cause these much issues, like, uh, you know, not quite to deflect responsibility per se, but to say like, you know, uh, we feel like there also should be systematic changes here. And we feel like there, I feel like we feel like, you know, this conversation between us isn't productive because we're, you know, we can't do anything at this point, you know, and that's kind of, you know, that's kind of what we're saying. Um, and, you know, you know, again, and here's a screenshot of, you know, us, you know, saying like, you know, our 2000 packages, you know, are really just not that much. Uh, and the unfortunate thing is, you know, we were uh, doing it over winter break. Um, and turns out our winter break uh, is right around the same time that NPM, uh, MT NPM's entire team and I guess GitHub's entire team, they all go on break uh, at the same time as us. Uh, and that was, um, you know, Christmas and whatnot, horrible holiday. Uh, you know, so we couldn't get in contact with anybody. Uh, and that was our Christmas. Um, 
famously a good policy to have your whole engineering team have the same vacation schedule. Yeah. Well, you know, everybody, everybody needs, everybody needs Christmas <laughs> so, to be fair, to be fair, but uh, yeah, definitely, definitely um, unfortunate timing. And, you know, we basically had, you know, and I guess in some ways it was lucky, right? Because I doubt, I bet, you know, if it was done on a uh, work week, you know, I bet it would have uh, upset a lot more people. Um, but uh, I, you know, at the same time, we just couldn't get in contact with anybody. Uh, you know, uh, apparently, uh, Patrick, you know, he reached out to uh, GitHub's um, uh, CEO. Uh, you know, apparently they, you know, go back like however many years. I don't know. Um, I really don't know that what happened there. But uh, you know, just nobody was responding to us. Uh, and then eventually, you know, we came back from um, we came back from uh break and. Uh, you know, we got the the first contact we ever had with them was on all of our um accounts. Uh, the um, there's this little banner that said that everything registry organization has been flagged. Your organization is hidden from the public. If you believe that this is a mistake, uh, you can have your organization status reviewed. Um, and uh, that was, you know, the frustrating thing about this banner is that you can't get rid of it. Uh, it's just kind of there. Um, luckily we have all, we all have ad blockers. So, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of where we are now. Um, still there, but, um, uh, you know, our accounts still work. That's great. Um, and then we got this email, uh, and this email was also, uh, really funny to us because, um, they accuse us of harassment, uh, which we thought was kind of an interesting, you know, policy choice. Uh, and, uh, you know, fair enough on, you know, Fair enough, you know, we can make judgment calls about what's appropriate, fair enough. But um, we did think that it was funny that GitHub support was using this policy to justify, uh, you know, the NPM organization, fine, that policy applies there. But taking down our GitHub organization, that's, you know, uh, the, this policy shouldn't be applying there. Um, uh, specifically because this policy, they cited from the GitHub acceptable use policy, which is not, you know, NPM policy. And, uh, you know, it just, just the whole thing. It's like, they shouldn't be this connected. Uh, GitHub owns NPM, which is why, but, you know, GitHub doesn't own crates.io, you know, GitHub doesn't own, you know, the Python package manager, you know, just kind of NPM's thing. And it's like, they're so intertwined. Um, and their specific, you know, like citation for what justified, you know, the GitHub removal is, you know, uh, I guess they said it was off topic and it interfered with interfered with platform features that disrupt the experience of other users. And again, we you know we were saying, Evan, it's on every topic. They must have been confused. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, you know, uh, we were saying, you know, we didn't use any GitHub platform features, you know, in ways that um disrupted other users. And you know, the examples there, you know, we're making it clear that you know what they're saying is say spamming issue comments that were emailing people and you know that sort of stuff and like you know you go on to github and you know you can look up ddos or malware and you know you see a million of things you know that you know some of them are arguably you know research and stuff but you know some of them are you know not so much uh and i think really you know kind of problem here again is that you know these two services are so closely you know engaged and you know the uh, it makes sense, you know, to be protecting your platform from, uh, you know, act actively being used, right? Again, to like send emails or to mine cryptocurrency on, you know, the actions, you know, and those were the examples that they were citing. But just, but you know, this was this we all thought was a little bit questionable, uh, and especially, you know, considering that we'd reach out to them, you know, we'd reach out to them for weeks ago, and we've never heard a response, uh, to any of those, you know, emails that we sent, um, and you know, kind of, uh. You know, uh, me being a high schooler and everything, uh, this email was uh, a little bit spooky, you know, to come in. Um, and, you know, that was kind of the first time the media had ever, you know, been interested in me, right? Uh, you know, again, I'm a high schooler. Uh, and, you know, just kind of, you know, thinking about, oh, you know, now, like, you know, GitHub's, you know, saying, like, harassing other users, right? And, like, what, are, what comment are they going to make to her, you know, like, it was kind of spooky, you know, because I mean, at least I, you know, made an active choice to like be using my name on the internet, you know, uh, and I was like, this is something that like, I want to be doing because, you know, looking ahead. Um, but, you know, just kind of seeing that thing, it's like really scary, you know, so I 
wrote out some email and, you know, I sent it. And, you know, I, I, was, I was actually happy with the article. You know, I felt like it was uh, fairly neutral coverage, you know, could have been a lot worse. But, you know, definitely like GitHub statement, you know, it was, uh, but, you know, it, it scared me. It scared me a lot. Um, and kind of as a last ditch effort, we um, actually filed a bug bounty. Um, and they basically agreed with us that, you know, uh, it's kind of faulty. They should make it more strict. But, you know, it's intentional design, right? It's intentional design that you can just kind of prevent on publishing, you know, in a couple hours. Uh, it, you know, another thing, uh, they let us upload, I think it was, I think it was, they let us upload like 800 packages an hour. Why would you need to upload 800 packages? Like, you know, just the entire, you know, the entire thing is like, you know, kind of in the bounty, like what we said is like, this could be used, say, for by malicious actors to, uh, you know, keep, uh, you know, say somebody accidentally uploads their secrets and uh, like secret keys. And, you know, now you can keep the secret keys and you can force the secret keys to stay public, even if, you know, the person is trying to remove it and just, you know, uh, you know, it's kind of lucky that it was found in this way, you know, because I've, you know, not necessarily uh, like, you know, groundbreaking you know, security issues, but still, you know, um, could cause substantial disruption, you know, beyond, you know, in more targeted ways, it'd be a lot worse than, you know, kind of our accident. Um, but, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of really where we ended. Um, I published a blog post, which is how, you know, I ended up here, where basically, uh, you know, I felt like, uh, you know, um, I felt like I wanted, you know, to kind of give my side of the story here, um, you know, because, you know, GitHub, you know, was able to provide their, you know, full comment. And, you know, I I, I just wanted, you know, to have my side and, you know, it worked out pretty well for me. Um, So, you know, the first takeaway is, you know, the butterfly effect or the law of unintended consequences or Murphy's law or, you know, as I extreme yak shaving, Um, you know, it's, it's all kind of an industry thing, right? Like, um, uh, you know, as I kind of work on my own kind of projects, I'm now kind of realizing like, uh it's always like the complexity it's always in such unexpected places right like you know we couldn't have seen this coming but you know it's just uh you know something that happened and kind of cascading effects so you know I, I i don't really think that there's much you can do to avoid that you know because it's like saying you know oh you know you shouldn't do creative things and you shouldn't do art because or you, you shouldn't start anything because you know it can be unexpectedly complex but you know it's just uh you know kind of an unexpected um awareness uh you know i guess um and you know the second thing is uh this is a group love song uh of it's a cruel and beautiful world um and you know uh um on one hand you know it was uh spooky in a lot of um unexpected ways uh, uh and that's kind of the cruel part but also you know i um uh you know kind of got a for the first of you know many valuable experiences um and uh my kind of last uh, key point here is don't let your dreams by be dreams. Uh, and, you know, that's a, that's a Shia LaBeouf quote. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of, you know, just kind of being a high schooler and um, kind of having, you know, unexpected, uh, you know, kind of fame and like kind of unexpectedly, you know, causing GitHub to like issue like a PR statement, and, like all that stuff, like completely by accident. You know, I'm kind of thinking like, Oh, you know, I'm kind. I like I, you know, can kind of uh do this uh, you know, kind of coding thing, and you know, it's it was almost kind of validating. And now, you know, I've actually had um, like me personally, I published an article. I don't know if you're aware of like the XZ thing, uh, that was a while ago, uh, um, like the supply chain attack, and I published yes. an article on that recently, and that was uh cited in the New York Times, and that was um. Uh, I was like briefly interviewed and wired and just like, you know, I, I, in some ways, I think that it was all kind of like indirectly an effect of this because, you know, before I would have thought, you know, like, uh, again, like I'm high schooler, there's not much valuable, you know, that I can say and now, you know, I'm kind of putting myself out there more. And I think that, um, overall, you know, I think that this has just been kind of a valuable kind of developmental, uh, experience for me. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's, that's my presentation. Uh. Well, yeah. first, first of all, Evan, uh, the the one guy is clearly wrong because it's, it's objectively very funny. Um, Thank you. So, <laughs> I don't know what he thinks uh, uh, is going on here, but he's just incorrect about that. Um, uh, their policy seems fucking insane. Like, what if you were to make a package that had all of the Fast and the Furious movies inside of it? 
and then make something else depend on it? Are they going to not take down that protected, you know, IP after they yeah. strike or something? I don't know. After they get some scary lawyer from like Winter Hill Law Firm, <laughs> I I doubt that they're going to keep that policy as soon as it becomes inconvenient to them. Yeah. So there's um, you know, actually something you know you know, we actually became aware of, you know, as we were installing all this stuff is, yeah, there's, you know, kind of a lot of, um, uh, I wouldn't even call it, I'm sure there's a lot of malicious, you know, use of NPM. And that was kind of, you know, what we were trying to, you know, find out, like, again, like what would happen, you know, if we were installing all of this, like surely it'd be chaotic, but there's a lot of um, very, very questionable use of NPM, I would say. Uh, there's, you know, something I've, I found is there's a lot of there's like hundreds I'd say hundreds of thousands of packages that are um re-uploading other packages uh but just with some like random random other name and you know it's like a complete copy you know the readme is the same everything's the same uh, and yeah you know it's it's used for piracy a little bit you know like distributing links you know really uh GitHub is too um it's not really but you know it's like as a package manager it's it, they'd prefer they'd prefer to keep it simple and actually actually you know i, I i've heard and i you know i i cannot confirm or deny this but i I've, he I've heard that um parts of it is public uh, parts of you know the website is actually powered by bash like like literal wow, bash i am that you know i i mean i think it's a testament to the fact that the removal of our packages which they eventually you know did it was not automatic it was over the span of about a day they slowly took down the packages one by one by one i genuinely think that they had like some guy like running like bash scripts to like delete every single package like very slowly and just like i you know it was just like shocking to watch like how kind of weak the system seemed um and you know actually also if you look at like their own like published code it's like a mess too and just like um i think that uh you know, kind of the mentality there. I, 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 I'd almost call it life support. Like, you know, it's, um, they know that's valuable and they know that's so valuable that kind of in whatever capacity that it exists, people will continue to use it, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm reminded of that famous story of, uh, I think it was a college student who tried to measure the internet and like wrote a script very innocently that would like, you know, ping everybody. And then like, the military was like knocking on his door the next day because he was pinging dot mil, you know, addresses. I think that's actually happened a number of times, but there, there was like some original person who this occurred to. Yeah, I I feel like I remember that. That That's actually uh interesting, though. You know, I, I'll, I'll have to uh, I'll have to look that up. But yeah, I you know, so, something that's always, you know, fascinated me is that, you know, like uh, there's some guy there's, you know, I, just some random example, you know, recently there was. Uh, the whole like beeper versus the apple thing uh mm -hmm. where you know beeper was like uh you know re-uploading the um or oh, beeper yeah. was you know, replicating but but you know the guy who wrote that script and it was also a high school student and just like you know I, I i think that um you know uh you know i i I, th I think that kind of something valuable that you know students have uh you know including grad students i think but you know just like you know uh you know sort of like a imagination and just like you know uh, you know, I, I think that's so, you know, so, I mean, kind of at different stages in our lives, we're told like in different, you know, sort of capacities, like, you know, this is what you can and can't do in the world, you know, and like, uh, you know, the high school students, you know, think that they can do anything or, you know, the high school students, you know, they don't, they don't have the power to do everything yet, but, you know, they think that they can do everything. And, you know, I think that actually that kind of arrogance is very powerful because again, like, you know, people have been trying for years and this random high school student is like, eh, you know, it can't be that hard. Right. And then, you know, it all kind of goes from there. So, you know, I, yeah, I think that we should be encouraging the cause. Have you ever done a capture the flag? No, I have not. Uh, I'm not actually, I'm, I'm not too in, I, I don't do too much security work or, or yeah, I, um, I mo like kind of until this, I was always doing, um, kind of app development sort of stuff. Uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you should try them because it's very much this style of thinking. And, yeah. um, I, I think Brennan's audio is not working right now, so he can't really speak to this, but both Brennan on, and I have enjoyed doing CTF or related events in the past. Um, 
I think I did my first one freshman year of college. So I wouldn't have been that much older than you. And like you, I started with app development. I was making iPhone apps when I was 15. So yeah. like that's uh, a, a very viable way to kind of exercise this skill of breaking things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, it's definitely, yeah. Definitely been a sort of uh skill I've developed in the past couple of months. But uh, yeah. Uh, what are you working on now? Um, so right now, uh, well, a couple of things, uh, so, you know, kind of my blog has been doing well. Um, recently I did, uh, I just did a little piece on like, uh, George, the Georgia government website and how, um, it's being used just, uh, like it's been hacked for, you know, like basically a year now. Uh, and I found that a year ago, but I never like wrote about that. Um, and it's still, it's still hacked, but, uh, you know, I just never uh, published that. Uh, so I published that, um, you know, the XC thing. Uh, so kind of my blog has actually been kind of a focus, you know, it kind of started with the NPM thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, like just kind of realizing that, you know, people something valuable uh, or I have something valuable to say. And then also I've, uh, I've been working on a social media, um, company, uh, you know, uh, as cliche as that is, but, uh, I'm, I've been working on a social media company, um, and kind of the premise of it is, uh uh back in uh 2005 to 2010 there were um social medias that were kind of focused on like other websites like uh you know I, i'm sure you've heard of like say geocities and whatever like kind of like random people's websites and you know myspace and that kind of golden like uh random like nonsense sort of thing but uh there was like delicious which was kind of uh a website that kind of like aggregated like links to all these other websites and it was kind of like community built upon you know sharing these links almost like almost kind of like reddit but you know kind of before reddit like got you know actual posts and like all that stuff like reddit was originally like just sharing links so kind of what i'm working on now is like uh a revival of that sort of thing and just like really focusing you know kind of dialing down on that link sharing thing because i think that there's something there that's kind of unrelated to that uh unrelated to the npm thing uh yeah, like uh, kind of a mixture of Tumblr and Hacker News. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm going for. Uh, a little quirky, but you know, I I, I don't I doubt it'll ever be mainstream. But you know, it's uh. uh so you're saying you're not I'm... looking for internships. I I would take an internship. I I I have something I'm looking at right now, or I have, I've heard of something, but uh, I I, I don't have an internship right now. But I would take an internship. Uh, Okay, we should talk offline. I have Y Combinator oh. for a startup, and uh, wow. it would be super fun to hire a high schooler. It'd be hilarious. Um, you're you're working. Are you started a Y Combinator, or yeah, you're yeah. working on one? I, I I own one. Yeah, you own one. Wow. All right. Yeah, hit me up. Yeah, that sounds great. Um. Uh. Okay. So you're going into like what senior year of high school? Yeah, I'm going to my senior year of high school. Yeah. And then you're trying to decide what the fuck you're going to do after that. Are you yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Programs or what are you thinking? This is this is hilarious. We've never talked to somebody in your position before. So yeah, no, no, I know no, when when I, when I got that email, uh, when I got that email, and I, you know, I also got an email from like some like political reporter, uh, you know, about the <laughs> thing, and you know, I'm thinking like, oh, you know, I'm in high school, but I'm not going to mention that part. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I'm probably going to go to college. Um, uh, you know, get a degree in computer yeah. science or whatever. Uh, you know, uh, and you know, I. I don't know. I don't know what's after that. I, I kind of want to start a business, you know, um, yeah. uh, like you, I guess. But, uh, uh, you know, we'll kind of see where that takes me, I think. Uh, cool. OK, well, that's that's super, super funny. Um, uh, I think you'll only get more attention with blog posts like these. That dude is wrong. Your project's hilarious. And mm -hmm. um, grown ass adults should write code that actually works and doesn't get broken by like somebody tooling around over the weekend. So like if those people can get wrecked, they did a bad job. It's not, <laughs> I'm not blaming you at all for that situation. Not only that, but also like the idea of an everything package isn't an inherently malicious or stupid thing. There are yeah. totally legitimate academic contexts where you might want something like that. If you're trying to do some sort of like wide scale measurement study where you're going to like, this is the sort of thing my peers do in their PhDs is I'm going to download every single package on NPM. I'm going to write some system to automatically detect what percentage of them are copies of other ones, what percentage of them are malware, et cetera, do a large scale analysis and publish it as like a research, you know, a internet research paper. Like that's a totally legitimate thing you might do. And if you did it, you might make a package exactly like yours specifically so that other researchers can reproduce your results. And in that right. context, you know, 
nobody would say, oh, you did this for a joke. They would say like, oh, you did this thing for academic reasons, which happens to have unintended consequences. How can we fix that? But just because you happen to be doing it for a slightly different reason, despite the fact that the code is, you know, like letter for letter the same as what I would have written in that context, then people get mad at it. Like that's just, it's stupid, right? It's just dumb for somebody to get upset over something like that. Yeah, and it's, it's I, I mean, I, I, I guess kind of the unfortunate kind of combination though is that like, you know, I, I, I would normally agree that like, um, uh, you know, you know, you know, there's like very, very legitimate reasons to, you know, even be, you know, trying to install, you know, all the post install uh, scripts and whatever. Um, the, you know, kind of interesting combination was that, like, if you were trying to go about that normally, you would probably write code specifically, you know, to install, you know, every single package. And like, that would be the intention of the code. And kind of, you know, where we, and kind of, you know, again, like leaning into the, you know, the kind of capture the flag, uh, you know, kind of uh, game of, you know, kind of using systems in ways that they weren't designed to, you know, yeah. going way, 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 way back to the first slide. Uh, uh, you know, one package, no package, all the packages, you know, um, you know, just we were kind of part of the fun was like, OK, we have the system, which is NPM, and we're going to kind of push NPM, you know, the NPM package manager, that code you know, to his absolute limits and see what happens. So I, I think that really kind of the unfortunate thing is that not only, you know, it was, you know, from the very start, you know, more of a creative thing than a academic thing, but also that, you know, the creative thing was simultaneously, um, you know, kind of about like, you know, testing the limits of things, uh, which, you know, tends to get people on edge, but then also while testing the limits of things, it kind of broke Thing. So, you know, I, I understand why people were upset, but yeah, you know, I think that uh, under different, con under different contexts, you know, I think it could have gone, you know, very differently. Brennan's making, he doesn't have audio, so he's texting me, but he's making the interesting point that there's some limitation to whether or not you could even license your code because of your age. Um, like with FOSS licensing, you might have to be 18 to have a license, which is an interesting point. Um, I lied about my age when I was in high school in order to publish iPhone apps in Objective C, yeah. and and I was like 15 and said I was 18 so I could publish. And then um, I got listed at one point on the Turkey App Store 20 under 20. It was like 20 app developers under 20. I don't know why it was only on the Turkey App Store. My app wasn't very good. It was like a weather app with jokes in it. It was basically a shitty version of Carrot Weather, if you've ever used that. And then yeah, they so, made yeah. like a good version of my, like I just wrote like 100 bad jokes and then put it into like a, an app. But um, uh, but I remember thinking like, boy, I'm so much farther under 20 than you think I am. Yeah, 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 no, exactly. Uh, 20, you know, way I, under 20. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it's it's funny. It's funny you say that because I also, I have an Apple developer account. I don't have anything published under it, but uh, Toastcat LLC. Um, and that that was formed specifically um, to get an Apple developer account because now, because now you know, what they have, they have uh, ID verification. Oh. Uh, so I, I, I can't even, can't even put, you know, January 1st, uh, 2000, you know, you have to, uh, go about it, you know, the hard way, uh, $500 in Massachusetts, uh, you might know, uh, as a Northeastern student, but, uh, <laughs> that's, that's $500. Hard. What? Uh, what? To, to, to form an LLC. So, you know, normally you can either join Apple as a individual or as a company. Uh, and the unfortunate thing is that, uh, as an individual, you need to be 18. Um, and the company, however, can, you know, have somebody else agree to publishing the app to make a company you have to pay $500 to Massachusetts. That's, that's the, so, uh, you know, uh, I, the, the, the whole, the whole app thing that, that kind of became its own kind of mess, but, uh, we're still sorting that thing out, but, uh, maybe there'll be an app uh, eventually. It's a beautiful mess you made. <laughs> yeah, I I kind of have a I kind of have a a knack for that. I'm starting to uh, make a lot of mistakes, <laughs> uh, completely by accident, of course. But uh, uh, number of times I've done that when I've been trying for something else. Yeah, take it, man, take it. Yeah. Well, I mean, wow. this, is, this is truly hilarious. Um, uh, I'll I'll message you offline. It, it would be fun to set up a project together. Yeah. Fun. But regardless, <laughs> thanks for talking to us. Um, and, uh, the, the official canonical opinion of the Boston computation club is that this is funny and that guy can, <laughs> can stuff it. <laughs> so <laughs> take that for what it's worth. <laughs>
Um, Good job. Uh, Keep it up. By the way, Evan, can I can I upload this talk afterwards? Is that fine with you? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, guys. Adios. Adios. Thank you for having me. Bye.